Okay, welcome to this product demonstration and user guide for uh, a urine testing strip, in this case the Wang Cheng URS 5K. Now URS stands for urine reagent strip, a urine testing strip is the, the common term that means the same thing. Uh, a 5K product means uh, it's got five parameters or five pads on it and the K refers to ketones because you can have different combinations of five on these. So if you are looking at a, a five, a 5K is a good combination in our uh, advice to you because, and we'll come to this, the combination of uh, the tests that you've got on here allow you to screen for quite a few things. Uh, and a lot of them are quite common things that you're gonna be interested in buying a test strip for. So just before we go to what the parameters are and what you look for results-wise when you're screening for specific illnesses or conditions, we're just going to run through a little bit on uh, urine reagent test strips and what to look for when buying one of these products. Firstly, they should all have the uh, appropriate certification mark for quality to, to indicate that they have passed some basic quality tests. And in Europe, that's the CE mark. In uh, the US, that's the FDA approval certificate mark. They may also be ISO uh, 510K and other TUV is another example of a, a quality certificate that will be indicated on the, uh, the lot and parameter. You also need to check the expiry date and lot numbers on these. Um, fresher, the better in general terms. So ones with a very long expiry date are always going to give you uh, clearer, better, quicker, more accurate results than stuff that's coming up to very near to it expiry. Having said that, they should all be good to use within the expiry date. The one proviso on that is, with all urine test strips, as soon as you've opened the pot and broken the seal, and if I just show you the seal on this, when they come, it's boxed with a data set or insert sheet, but when you unscrew the cap, this one's broken to take these test strips out, but they should have a seal which should be unbroken at the time that you uh, get the test. Now that is very important, that seal basically keeps all the moisture out. There'll be a moisture absorbent pouch desiccant loaded with the 100 test strips in the, each vial. But as soon as that vial lid seal is popped, you need to use these test strips ideally within a three month period. The manufacturer will guarantee their accuracy only for a duration of three months after the break in the seal. That is not a guarantee up to the point of expiry. The reason being, atmospheric moisture absorption will, in some cases, particularly on certain parameters, spoil these test strips as soon as it occurs. And you can have that occur within 24 hours if you leave these open in a steamy bathroom, you'll find that the pads no longer resemble the normal starting color that we're showing you here on, on the pads um, in front of you. So once that changes occurred, once the moisture's, you can't dry them out again and reuse them, they've, they've gone basically, you've got to buy fresh test strips. So just buy a quantity that you're going to use over a three month period. Don't be afraid to use them frequently because basically you're not saving yourself any money by extending their use anywhere beyond three months after you've popped that seal. Now, a little bit about the parameters that you've got on a 5K pad. And basically what you've got here is a glucose and ketone test, which is ideal for anybody wanting to screen for diabetes. And you would do that by looking for the presence of glucose in the urine after a heavy sugary meal. One to two hours after that, dip test for urine, presence of sugar is a key indicator for the early onset or development of diabetes and that will occur long before any symptoms show. So as a glucose screen, as a diabetic screen, 5K is ideal. They've also got the ketone test pad on there. So once diabetes has developed, they're ideal for people that are on either dietary control with tablets or insulin control where they're wanting to make sure that they are not excreting any ketone bodies and having high levels of sugar. Diabetic ketoacidosis is a combination of very high sugar levels with ketone bodies detectable in the urine and blood. Now, that's quite a dangerous condition. Low levels of ketones in urine associated with diabetes can be a, an early indicator of that before it gets to the serious life-threatening conditions or states. So again, these have a, a great use for people that have got diabetes and are looking to screen to make sure that their control is good. Uh, the next parameter we're going to talk about is the protein test. Now this is not microalbuminuria test, it's a gross protein screen. Now normal healthy individuals should not have protein in their urine. Protein in the absence of any urinary tract infection symptoms or cystitis symptoms 
could be an early indicator of kidney disease. Now, proteinuria or protein in the urine should normally not be detectable at all in healthy kidneys and healthy individuals. So these tests are a great screen for kidney disease by just looking for the presence of protein showing on it. The next parameter that we're going to talk about to you is the blood parameter. Now, healthy individuals should not have any blood in their urine. Now, you need to not test in ladies that are anywhere around menstruation for the presence of blood in urine because it could be a contaminant that's not coming through the, the renal system but it's just contaminating when you're collecting the urine sample but excluding that uh, an indicator here for the presence of uh, cystitis which is a bladder infection or a kidney infection such as a pyelonephritis a more serious infection ascending up the renal tract would be the presence of both protein and blood in the urine so again these tests have everything on them that is required to, to screen uh, for recurrent renal tract infections or cystitis. And finally, the last parameter on these is the pH or acidity level in urine. Now, a lot of you will be interested in uh, screening for uh, the pH in, in the urine and the body generally to see whether you've got a normal pH. Things that will affect the pH are things like ketoacidosis, acidosis generally, dietary uh, measures can have an effect on the pH and other parameters can affect the pH. It will also be affected quite often in, in bladder infections, but the two key indicators of that on these test strips would be the presence of blood and protein. So there you are, we've run through a few of, of what you uh, can test for you in the test strips. If we just run you through how to interpret your results and just show you here on the five pad, the way you hold these is on the end, away from the pads which are dipped into the urine. And then if you hold those upright, you will see that they match very closely the five parameters shown here for negative results. Now the pad colors will darken slightly when they're wetted into the urine sample, but a full negative set of results should match that column indicated within the black linings. To indicate what levels of abnormalities you've detected, you have to look at these at the specific read times indicated next to the parameter. So you're starting reading glucose at 30 seconds, you're reading pH and protein and blood at 60 seconds, and ketones at 40 seconds. So you do need a timer as soon as you start uh, finding any abnormal results. So you are comparing the color against the row at the specific time for that parameter and making a note of the, the level. Now you will see that there is a above each of these colors that you're comparing against the pad an indicator of the levels that you can make note of and the further over you are towards the the right hand aspect of those rows the greater the amount of that um, indicator you've detected in the urine so it's a simple matter of color matching against the specific row on that pad at the given time to read your results so there you have it, that's the uh, Wan Chen URS 5K, 5 parameter urine test reagent test strips and a little guidance on how and what you're looking for when you're buying this product to do testing uh, for yourself.